In the depths of our oceans lies something so terrifying that it even sends great white sharks, the ocean's most feared predator, fleeing for their lives. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. This is one of the most terrifying disappearances in today's world. It is the disappearance of a nine-foot great white shark nicknamed Shark Alpha. Marine biologists have been concerned about the rapid decline in great white shark numbers globally. They are important predators in our oceans, and their demise will spell disaster for the entire marine ecosystem. Being high up in the food chain, they keep everything else in check. You would be forgiven for thinking that great white sharks are apex predators. Their very existence sends shivers down our spines, and they are at the back of our minds every time we enter the water. We have movies like Jaws to thank for that. Those films changed our perception of sharks forever, and instead of being mesmerized by these incredible creatures, we fear them. But these predators that regularly grow up to 15 feet long and weigh in excess of a ton are prey for animals even deadlier than they are. They are not at the top of the food chain, and they are prey for a number of other marine animals that lurk in the deep blue. Should we be fearing great white sharks, or should we be fearing the creatures that hunt them? In 2003, to understand the movement and migration patterns of Australia's great white sharks, filmmaker Dave Rigg and a team of marine biologists decided to tag the sharks. They stabbed a sharp ram into the base of the dorsal fins to secure the tagging device and let the technology do the rest. It was Australia's largest shark tagging program at the time. On dry land, they could observe the movements, speed, and temperature of the animals they had tagged. It gave them comprehensive data that would allow them to track the sharks and gain greater insight into their habits and behaviors. But they weren't prepared for what happened next. The first shark they tagged they named Shark Alpha. She was nine feet long, sturdy, healthy, and powerful. She was a shark in her prime, a lethal hunting machine with millions of years of predatory instinct packed into her muscular body. But unbeknown to the team, her days were numbered. Just four months after tagging the sharks, one of the trackers showed the shark moving incredible close to shore. Moments later, its movement stopped altogether. It was Shark Alpha. The team rushed to the location to find out what had happened, but there was no sign of the shark. Instead, there, washed up on the shoreline, was the electronic tag they had fitted only months before. It was located just two and a half miles from where the shark had been tagged. It had either been ripped out of the shark or the shark itself had been completely devoured. But by what? When the team analyzed the data on the tag, they found some shocking information. Not long before the tag had washed ashore, it had been recorded as swimming along at the cruising speed of Shark Alpha before suddenly changing direction rapidly and then diving to a depth of 1,900 feet. Not only that, but at the same time, the tag showed a dramatic temperature shift from 7 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. This suggested to the scientists that the data they were now playing back and reading was displaying the exact moment the shark was attacked, dragged down to the depths, and then consumed by something enormous. The sudden change in temperature was the tag recording the temperature inside the stomach of the predator. But who was that predator? What creature would take on a nine-foot great white shark in the open ocean? Well, actually, there are a few marine animals that attack great whites. Perhaps the most well-known are orcas or killer whales. These striking black and white members of the dolphin family are highly intelligent, highly social animals that work together in their pods to bring down large prey. They eat anything from fish and squid to sea turtles, seabirds, and a variety of mammals. Their cooperative hunting techniques allow them to take down prey much larger than themselves. They have even successfully hunted blue whales. They chase the mammals that require air to breathe, occasionally bashing into them or leaning on them in an attempt to drown them. Their persistent chasing tires them out or drives them into shallow waters, trapping them or separating them from the rest of their pod. It can be distressing to watch a whale calf being separated from its mother, 
drowned and then torn to shreds by orcas. Although orcas are magnificent in their own right, with socialization skills on a par with some primates, specific calls or names for individuals in their pod and different dialects depending on where they come from, they are still killer whales. They show no mercy for the other marine mammals they take down. Could it be possible that Shark Alpha was devoured by a pod of orcas? They would certainly be capable of such a move and have been recorded hunting great white sharks relatively easily. One video in early 2024 showed an orca taking down a great white on its own, severing its pectoral fin and bashing it in the side before devouring its liver all in under two minutes. But the data on the tracker showed Shark Alpha was plunged down to a depth of 1,900 feet. Orcas rarely dive to those depths. They are more surface hunters. Not only that, but the temperature inside the predator was too cool to be an orca. Their internal body temperature is much closer to a human's at around 37 degrees Celsius, and the temperature recorded on the shark's tracker was down to 25 degrees Celsius. With Dave Rigg and the team ruling out killer whales as the culprit, their attention turned to something else, something that is rarely seen but that we know is down there in the ocean's depths. The colossal squid. Centuries ago, sailors spoke of becoming shipwrecked after being attacked by giant squid, sometimes so large that their tentacles wrapped around their entire ship and dragged it below the waves. Of course, these were just tales from land-starved sailors. But the colossal squid is thought to weigh more than half a ton and grow between 30 and 40 feet long. It would dwarf a human if swimming side by side. They feed on marine worms, hunt large fish such as toothfish, and also eat other squid. Little is known about them as they rarely surface or are washed ashore. Scientists have tried to learn more about them by attaching recording devices to their main predators, sperm whales. This has provided an insight into their lives in the murky depths. They regularly live at depths of 5,000 feet or more in the southern ocean surrounding Antarctica. Their relatives, the giant squid, although much smaller, grow to lengths of 10 feet. These two inhabit the ocean depths but are found nearer drop-offs and closer to oceanic islands. Could these enormous squid have been responsible for the demise of Shark Alpha? It's possible, but sharks don't swim at the depths that colossal squid do. Although squid would be big enough to engulf a shark measuring 9 feet long, this isn't their typical prey. What got Shark Alpha was something that came up from the depths, nearer the surface, and took her down dead or alive. There are other theories that have been posed by excited individuals from all over the world. Are we living on Earth with a marine reptile or prehistoric dinosaur that somehow made it through the extinction event from 60 million years ago undetected? Perhaps a Mosasaur or a Spinosaurus? It's doubtful. What about Megalodon? Some evidence suggests that there is something colossal out beneath the waves, when enormous whales wash ashore with devastating bites taken out of them, or when tagged animals vanish off the face of the Earth. Megalodon was alive 23 to 3.6 million years ago during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs. It was a giant of epic proportions. It is hard to imagine just how enormous this shark was, its features are most similar to today's great white shark, and so they look similar in appearance. But the great white shark would look like a puppy dog in comparison. Size estimates have been based on the triangular fossilized teeth that have washed ashore over the years. Depending on the method used to estimate the full body size, some scientists have concluded that the megalodon would have grown to 67 feet long. Swimming next to it, not that you'd want to, a fully grown man would be dwarfed by the shark's pectoral fin alone. A small great white shark could be consumed whole in one gulp of Megalodon's gigantic jaws. It was considered the most powerful apex predator of its time and the most formidable predator to have ever lived on Earth owing to its speed, size, and powerful jaws. They consumed anything they wanted as size of prey was not an issue. Therefore, their diet was wide and varied. Fossilized whale bones have been found with large and devastating tooth marks engraved on them. 
presumably from Megalodon. They preyed upon sperm whales, bowhead whales, as well as seals, turtles, and smaller fish. Something like a great white shark would have been a mere morsel for these prehistoric beasts. But is it possible that they have gone undetected all these years? Our ocean depths are the greatest unexplored areas of our planet. Deep sea specialists are finding new, weird, and wonderful sea life in the abyssal plains every year. There are likely thousands of species yet to be discovered. Most of these are bottom-dwelling animals that feed off dead and decaying matter or filter feed on the dark ocean floor. Could there be a giant hidden amongst them? As exciting as it would be, if not a little terrifying. If the Megalodon genus had survived since its reported extinction 3.6 million years ago, then we would likely have seen a lot more evidence. Megalodon was a shark, and sharks typically shed their teeth. Megalodon was no different, which is why finding a fossilized Megalodon tooth while fossil hunting on the beach isn't that uncommon. But we wouldn't just be finding fossilized Megalodon teeth if it were truly still alive we would be finding the real teeth. The seafloor would be littered with them, and that's not something that has been seen. We would also likely find many more mangled remains of animals that had fallen prey to a giant megalodon. There is a reason they died out all those years ago. Climate change caused a cooling of the seas. Megalodon, as well as today's sharks, rely on warmer, shallow waters to birth their young. When the glaciers expanded at the poles and the seawater retreated, those nursery areas were lost. On top of that, their food sources dried up. Many baleen whale species became extinct with the changing sea temperatures. The giant shark's demise was inevitable. So, this doesn't explain what happened to Shark Alpha. Or does it? Although it's been years since Shark Alpha's tracking tag washed ashore, her disappearance remains a mystery. They don't believe that it was Megalodon itself, but it could have been a shark of monstrous proportions. To kill a 9-foot Great White, have an internal body temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and power down through the water column to 1,900 feet at speed, the shark responsible for Alpha's death must have been at least 16 feet long and weighed over 2 tons. The internal body temperature that is too low for an orca is too high for an average-sized shark but it is possible if the shark was big, really big. Female great whites seem to fit the bill. 16 feet in length is along the upper limits of average sizes for them, with one specimen that was caught having measured a staggering 19 feet long. Although no one is certain about the fate of shark alpha, there are many predators out there that could have been responsible. And there are things far scarier than 9 feet great white sharks beneath the waves. Dave Rigg produced a documentary called Hunt for the Super Predator, which was aired on the Smithsonian Channel. It detailed their hunt to find answers. 